Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bud Mind Body Blend. We're in our last class of January 2023. We've been focusing on the New York Times article with five exercises for longevity. Those are the body weight squat, the single leg stance, so being able to stand on one foot for at least 10 seconds, the lateral leg raise, which also works balance and hip stability. We also have the tandem stance, which is standing with one foot directly in front of the other. And the last one is bird dog. And we've been doing that both from a kneeling position and a standing position. So we are going to implement those in our class again today. You have the option with or without hand weights, but we are first starting with our eight form Tai Chi. We are going to put it all together and try to go through that form three times today. If I have time at the end of class, I'd also like to wrap up with it at the finish. So if you haven't been through all of my uh, sessions with the movements in the Tai Chi, I'll go a little slower the first time through, and then we'll pick up the pace a little bit. So this is our YMCA Moving for Better Balance eight form Tai Chi series. We'll start with our feet fairly close together. Find your best posture. So pull those shoulder blades up back and down and stand really tall and lifted. Spread your toes a little bit. Feel your, your body sinking into the earth from the waist down and lifting to the sky from the waist up. And we'll step out to the right side. Let the arms float up about halfway. And as they float back down, sink into those knees just a little bit and shift your body weight over to your right foot come into right ball. So whenever we're in right ball, our body weight is on our right foot. We'll give a little prep to the right side and come in to roll the ball, stepping out to the left, lead with your heel, and then bring this into left ball, tapping the right foot, prep to that left side, step out and roll the ball. Nice intentional movement. And then we'll part the wild horse's mane, prep to the right, step out left on the diagonal, lead with your heel, and switch the position of your hands. Looking at the left palm, the right palm is just attached here to the right hip. Shift your body weight back, pivot on the heel, step to the left, body weight is on the left foot or in left ball. Prep to that left side, step out diagonal, Brush the wild horse's mane, looking toward the hand, pivot on the heel, shifting your body weight, come back into right ball. So you're on your right foot. Moving into single whip, prep to the right, make a hook with your right hand, step directly out to the left and block away. Pivot on that heel and come into left ball, standing on your left foot. Prep to the left, make a hook with your left hand, step directly out, lead with the heel, block. As you pivot on the heel, let the hook go and step back in to our right ball. Waving hands like clouds. So we'll prep and then start to step out three times, switching the hands and twisting through the spine. And two more steps. On the third step, you're in left ball. We'll pause, you're on your left foot. Prep and waving hands like clouds. Three steps to the right side. And two. Back into right ball. Stepping into repulse monkey, this one moves backward. So we'll step back with the ball of the left foot on a little bit of an angle, shift your body weight, open your arms out, your front hand blocks, your back hand turns up, pull your toes up on that right foot and look back to the back hand behind you. Step into left ball so the right foot taps in to meet the left. Step back with the right foot, lead with the ball of the foot, open the arms, block with the front hand, Palm up on the back hand, look back to that hand, 
Really pull the left toes up. Step backward into right ball. Now we have brush knee. So we'll prep to the right. This bottom hand, which is the left, will brush low across the left leg as you push out and block. Shift your body weight, pivot on the heel, and you'll do a roll the ball type of action to come into left ball. Prep, right hand, brush knee, press away, block. Pivot, roll the ball action with the hands, coming into right ball. Now we have, let's see, uh, Fair Lady works the shuttles. So we'll prep to the right. As we step out to that left diagonal, the hand switch positions and it's like we're blocking out the sun. So both palms will press out, pivot on the heel, and return to left ball. So right arm is underneath, left arm is on top. We're standing on the left foot. Prep, Fair Lady works the shuttles. Step out, blocking the sun. Pivot on the heel, coming into right ball. Right hand on top, we're standing on the right foot. And our last form is we're going to grasp the peacock's tail. Pivot to that right to prep. As we step out left, let both hands kind of press out, then turn your palms towards each other. Shift your body weight as we come along the tail. Then we come into push hands, the wrists intersect draw back, press away, step onto your left foot, and come into left ball. And we'll prep to the left. Step out, the hands both press away, then the palms face each other as we shift our body weight, come into push hands, draw back, let your fingertips float down. Press away, pivot on the heel, come into right ball. Place hands to the shoulders as we step out. Closing position, brush away. As the arms float down, step back into our starting position. All right, two more rounds through this eight form. We'll move a little bit quicker. Starting to step out to the right, bring the arms up. Soften the knees, step to the right foot, right ball. Roll the ball, stepping out left. Roll the ball to the right. Single whip, no, single whip. <laughs> yes, single whip, yes. All right, make our hook. No, it's Brush the Wild Horse's Mane. I know you guys are talking to me saying, no, it's not single whip. Brush the Wild Horse's Mane, part the Wild Horse's Mane, step out, look at the palm, pivot on the heel, step into left ball. Prep, brush that Wild Horse's Mane. Pivot on the heel, step into right ball. Now single whip, prep, make your hook. Step directly to the side, lead with your heel and block away. Let the hook go as you pivot on the heel, stepping into left ball, standing on your left foot, prep, make your hook. Step out, block, pivot on the heel, coming into right ball, waving hands like clouds. So we'll prep, step out, three steps, one, and two, twisting through the spine, looking right to left, stopping in left ball, tapping the ball of the right foot, and we'll move three times to the right. Wonderful warm up for our shoulders. One more, holding our right ball. Repulse monkey, step back with that left foot, Open out the arms, block, look to the back hand, and step backwards with the right foot into left ball. Stepping back to the left, open out, block front hand, palm up back hand, and stepping in. Brush knee, prep, 
bottom arm brushes across the thigh, block. Pivot on the heel, roll the ball into left ball, standing on your left foot. Prep, bottom hand, brush knee, press it out. Pivot on the heel, coming back into left ball. Fair lady works the shuttles, prep. Step out, block the sun. Pivot on the heel, coming into left ball, left hand on top. Prep, step out diagonal. Block the sun. Pivot on the heel, coming into right ball. Grasp the peacock's tail, prep. Step out, both arms extend, palms face each other. Sweep down, pull up those left toes. Push hands, draw back, press away. Pivot on the heel, coming into left ball. Other side, prep, take it out, palms face in. Push hands, draw back. Press away, pivot on the heel, coming into right ball, hands to the shoulders as we step away, brush, release the arms, and step in. One more time through our sequence. Give yourself some room facing forward. Stand tall, step out right, bring the arms up. Let them float down, sink into the knee, shift into the right foot, right ball. Roll the ball, step out, switching hands. Prep, step out, switching hands. Brush the wild horse's mane. Prep, step out, looking to the palm. Pivot on the heel, left ball. Prep, brush the wild horse's mane. Pivot and step in, single whip. Prep, make a hook, step out and block. Pivot on the heel, letting the hook go. Left ball, standing on the left foot, prep. Make your hook, step out and block. Pivot on the heel, let the hook go. Step into right ball. Waving hands like clouds, prep. Three steps to the left side, rotating and swirling the arms right in front of your body. Last step, we stay in left ball and pause. Three steps to the right. And two. Holding our right ball, read pulse monkey. Step backward, open out, block, and look to the back hand. Step backward into left ball. Step back right foot, open out, block and look. Step backward into right ball. Brush knee, prep. The bottom arm brushes across the thigh, press out. Pivot on the heel, roll the ball with the arms to get into left ball. Prep, bottom hand brushes across the thigh. Pivot on the heel. Roll the ball. Fair lady works the shuttles. Prep. Step out, block the sun. Pivot on the heel. Coming into left ball. Prep. And press out. Pivot. Come into right ball. Grasp the peacock's tail. Prep. Press away. Palms face in. Sweep down. Push hands. Draw back, press away, pivot on the heel, come into left ball, standing on the left foot, prep, press away, draw it all the way down that tail, push hands, pull it back, press away, pivot on the heel, come into right ball, for our closing posture, hands to shoulders, brush, and step in. Nicely done. I hope that's starting to feel more comfortable and really flowing for you. Let's grab a couple of hand weights 
and your chair. We're going to go through some of our uh, exercises from the New York Times. The weight's just a moderate uh, workload. I'm going to grab my fives. So some of the things that we've done uh, this past month is really focus on working the legs. So I want you to sit down toward the very front edge of your chair. Place your right foot in front of your left in tandem stance. Now, if you can, have them directly behind each other. If you feel more comfortable separating them, you can do that as well. We are going to shift forward and rise up and extend the weights forward. And then sit back down into the chair. Now, if you need help standing up and down out of the chair, then you're not using weights. You're just reaching your hands behind you to the chair to help you come on down. So my back heel is lifted. This is going to take some of the body weight out of the back leg so that I'm standing up mostly using my right leg. Let's get one more. And come down, adding on to our sequence. Stand up, the arms come forward. As your arms lower, your left knee lifts into single leg stance. Step back, arms go forward, and we squat down, the arms lower. Step up, the arms raise, the arms lower as the leg lifts. Step back behind and sit. So some options for shoulder raises are bicep curls. You can do that same option by bending the elbows as you come up and down from the chair. Let's get two more with this sequence. And one more, standing up, the arms go forward or elbows bend, the knee lifts, back and come down. So let's switch our tandem stance. Left foot is in front, right foot is behind directly if you can. The heel is up. As we stand, the arms come forward. And as we sit, the arms come down. Or curls. Or you can change these upper body exercises any way you like. Maybe you're working out on a different plane. Maybe you're pressing above the head. So just play with this. The focus is on balance. And we're combining two of those New York Times exercises, the body weight squat and the tandem stance. All right, we're adding on. So as we come up, the arms go forward. We lift that back knee up as the arms go down. Step back behind you on the ball of the foot and lower yourself down to the chair. We're up. Good, it's really challenging to focus on our balance here as we're moving our upper body. So if you wanna take the arm movements out of it, feel free to do that to give yourself more success with the balance. Let's get three more full repetitions. Nice and steady, really grounding into your standing leg. And one more. And coming down. Great job. Okay, bring the weights to your chest. Take your feet medium distance apart. You're going to stand, lift that outside leg into our lateral leg lift, close it in and sit back down. Other side, stand, lift, and lower. At your own pace, alternating these sides. 
Now, if you don't have a chair or you don't want to use a chair, you're just doing a squat and lifting. So at home today, either one is fine. What are the benefits? Well, sometimes we have to go lower to get all the way into the chair. And then we take all the effort out of the legs and then have to start again activating those muscles. If we're squatting, we might tend to go a little less deep. That's okay too, so I want you to do the one that works best for you. So your option is to do an overhead press on the lateral leg lift. So we push, push up or a small press up if we're focusing on shoulders that might have some injuries. So each time we shift our body weight from one foot to the other, our neuromuscular pathways have to make a switch. Where do we need to engage the muscles? How do we need to shift our balance to be equal on each side? Now, without the arms, we'll squat, lift the leg three times. Try not to touch it to the floor unless you need to. And then sit down. Other side, we'll come up, lift the leg three times. And lower. We'll do a few of these and then I want you to play with arm movements. So you can do some overhead presses here. You can do some forward presses. You can do bicep curls. So make this a challenge for your body today. And if you don't have weights, that's okay. You can still move your arms through a range of motion to make this challenging. So the three leg raises is giving us more moving work on the hip muscles. And it's challenging our balance a little bit more on the standing leg. So let's get one more triple leg raise on each side. Finishing by coming all the way down and then standing up and releasing those weights. Just roll the shoulders a couple of times. Using your chair for a balance for our standing bird dog. So I want one weight, right hand, any size that you want to challenge the upper back for rows and kickbacks. So when we're standing in bird dog, we have the right foot on the ground, the left hand attached to your chair. This gives us that diagonal um, focus of our stability. So on the right foot, left hand. So your left foot and your right hand are the free sides. So if you feel pretty comfortable here in this position and pretty stable, just touch your fingertips here. Extend that back leg nice and straight. Standing knee is softened. And we'll pull this elbow up, extend the arm straight into a kickback, keep that arm straight, and slowly lower it back down. So we pull it up, extend it straight, and lower it slowly. Three more. Our goal is to keep our pelvis really stable and still if possible, to keep our spine in neutral, and to really focus on a steady core. Now we'll reverse this. So we come up with a straight arm. We bend the elbow, 
and lower it down toward the floor. Straight arm goes back, elbow bends, and lower. So now I'm starting to feel my right leg, hamstring, and glute are really starting to talk to me, being on this single leg. So I know we're working on strength here and endurance. Here's number five. And rest, try to use the strength of your back leg and pull yourself up to single leg stance if possible. Whoa, that was challenging. Hold five seconds, four, three, two, and one. Rest down. All right, other side, and I'm just gonna switch my chair so you can see my arm a little bit better from your vantage point. So we stand on our left foot. The right hand is on the chair. Before you even use the arm, make sure that you have a good stable position here. Check the alignment of your head and just barely use your right fingertips. So let's come into the first pattern of exercises. The elbow pulls up, we do a row. The arm straightens for a kickback. Keep it straight and resist gravity as you let it come down with control. Five reps, pull it up, kick it back, and slowly lower. I'm trying to do a couple of them without my hand on the chair. A little bit challenging here. Two more. Is your back leg really straight? Tighten those muscles in your quads and glutes. One more time, pull it up, kick it back, and control the return. Let's reverse that. Straight arm comes back. The elbow bends without dropping. Then we lower the arm down for five. I'm not going to coach you on when to breathe in and when to breathe out. I just want you to let your body do what feels natural for you. I'm not sure if this is number four or number five, so I'll call it number four. I'd rather get an extra than not enough. Last one. Now we're going to try to stand up into single leg stance. 10, nine, eight, five, four, three, two, and one, and relax down. Okay, done with the chair. So you can either move it out of the way or change your space. So you've got room around you. We are going to come into the curtsy squat. It is very similar to the tandem stance, but we're crossing the feet behind each other. So take your toes slightly apart into a little bit of a first position. Bring your weights to your chest. Shift your body weight into your left foot. Curtsy your right foot behind. Bend your knees any amount, and you'll notice your knees are going to open. Stand up and lift that leg to the side. Then we'll switch, so step back into your turnout. Pick your left foot off the floor, curtsy. Lift the leg into lateral leg raise, and then step down. Shift your body weight, curtsy, lateral leg raise, step down curtsy, lateral leg raise, and step down. So now when we curtsy, turn your body and then lower your weights down to the floor any amount. Then step in, lateral leg raise, press up, step back down. Curtsy, twist, Lateral leg raise, optional arms come up, step down. 
So let's get five more on each side if we can, a total of 10 more repetitions. Go slow and controlled, curtsy, lift, step, nine more, curtsy, lift, step, eight, job everybody seven so much involved in this pattern and sequence of movements on the rotation we're working our core shoulders hip stability balance we have five more It's hard to go slow, it requires a lot of control. Four. Your curtsy can be small. One more on each side, given this 10 total. Step back in and lower those weights down. Excellent job. Okay, with or without weights, we are going to try to alternate a standing bird dog. I'm gonna show without weights first because you can always pick them up if this feels okay for you. So when we step forward with the right foot onto the ground, the left leg is behind, so your right arm needs to come forward and then step back and step in. Now your left foot steps forward, your right foot goes back, left arm goes forward. Step back and step in. Right foot, right hand. Step back, step in. Left foot, left hand. Step back, step in. So if you want to use hand weights, nothing really heavy, but you can also shorten the amount that you're raising that arm. So when the right foot steps forward, left foot goes back, the right arm reaches out. Wow, that really changes my center of gravity. Step back, step in. So let's take this at your own pace, but I'm gonna count four more on each side for me. You don't have to worry about counting if you don't want. Just bring your awareness on your alignment, your body position. Job three more on each side. And you can linger there in that pose as long as you like. Make sure you really are rock solid. Hesitate there for a moment. Two more each side. If you're needing help with balance on this, then you're reaching the hand to the chair of the arm that you're not reaching forward, if that makes sense. And I've got one more, left foot, left hand. And step in. All right, we are going to practice getting up and down off the floor. So I'm going to pull out my mat. Each time we come down, we'll be coming to a full kneeling position. If that doesn't feel comfortable for you or you're not in a place to do that today, 
then you're going to come down any amount that you can. So let's, let's start with our right foot in front. The ball of your left foot's behind you. You can use your hands here on your thigh and I want you to bring your knee all the way down to the floor. And then we're going to use the strength of this right leg. Again, your hands can be here or you can reach them forward. You can even hold weights and then stand yourself up. Now I'm gonna stay in a split stance position, but you can always tap your foot in each time if you want, but we're staying on the same side. So let's come all the way down. I'd like to get 10 of these. Use this right leg, stand up, nine. And try to go down slow, so we're not coming down forcefully to the ground. You're really using the strength of this front leg to come down. If you're not coming all the way down, you're just bending your knees any amount where you know you can step back up. We have five more. Control, control. Four. If you need some help, then you have a chair in front of you so that you can put your hands on it and help yourself stand up. Two more times. And our last time we stand up and the back foot comes forward and pause and rest. We'll take a nice big step back with your right foot. So now the left one's going to be the major prime mover here. You can use your hands on your thighs or on a chair, come all the way down to the knee or any amount. 10 repetitions, standing one. Really common for one side to be a whole lot stronger than the other. Two. Try not to rush. Even if you don't get 10, that's okay. Go slow and controlled. Here's number four for me. And number five. If it's starting to bother your knees or anything, just do chair squats. Six. Four more. Seven. Eight. Starting to feel that fatigue setting in a little bit. Nine. One more all the way up. 10 and step the feet in. Great job. Coming down to your mat for kneeling bird dog. So back into one more of our New York Times articles, this time from the hands and the knees. Option to have a hand weight with you, nothing too heavy, just one. We are going to take the right leg back and the left arm forward and keep your right knee bent. Then circle your right leg around and set your hand and knee back toward the mat. So this is a little bit of that circumduction action we did a couple weeks ago. Right leg, left arm goes out, circle, and come down. So your option is to come back to this hands and knees position each time, or leave the left arm out and just take the leg up and circle, up and circle, Pause for a moment, back to all fours, hands and knees. 
Option, take your hand weight, tuck it in that right knee, grab it nice and tight by firing your hamstring. Left arm out, right leg goes up, around, and down five times. Up, around, down. Nice level hips. Four. Three. Two. One. If you need a break, take it. Otherwise, reverse your knee circle. You go out, up, and down. Out, up, and down. Three more for five. Your left hand can come to the mat if you need it there. Two more. Great hip strengthener. Last one. And relax. Slide the weight out, bring it off to the other side. Practicing the other side, your left leg goes back with a bent knee. Your right arm goes out, and then we just come back in. So this is our simplest version. Left leg, right arm, all the way back in. Next version, that right hand stays out. The left knee goes up, around, and down. So we'll try a couple on this side so you can decide whether you want to add the weight. If you do, tuck it right behind your left knee. Squeeze it in to fire your hamstring. And we've got five repetitions. Right arm extends, left leg goes up, around, and down. Four. Really good back strengthener here as well. Three. Two. And one. If you need a break, take it. Otherwise, reverse. Then he goes out, up, and down as you circle. Right hand can find the mat if you need it there to stabilize you. Three more. And two. And one. And relax it down. Okay, keep that light weight with you for an option to work some rotator cuff as we come down into a sideline position. You can be up high on your elbow. You can be down low and support your head, or you can lay your head all the way down onto your bicep. So find a comfortable position here. Your bottom knee is bent. Your knees are stacked to start. Extend the top leg straight away from your body. We're going to lift that leg up and down. Then bring the leg forward a comfortable amount. Lift it up and down. Come back in alignment with your body. Lift it up and down. Come forward and lift. There's two. We have three more reps. So you can be adding your rotator cuff with this if you want to pick up that weight. And each time your leg goes up, your arm goes up Nice job, two more. And one more lifting here. Bring it forward, lift here, and draw it back. Intersect the legs together for clamshell. Option, your weight can go right here on your thigh and keep your feet together as we open and close. Nine. 
eight. So where I want you to feel it is right in that medial glute. Squeeze that area. If you'd rather do some more rotator cuff, you can be here. We've got five, four. Wow, it's amazing how much you feel this one. Two more. And last one. And rest. So before we switch sides, I want to stretch this glute. So press yourself up with strong arms. Take this leg that was the top leg, cross it in front, and twist. So I'm pulling my knee slightly in toward my shoulder, looking over the back shoulder. For me, it's my right, but for you might be the left. Just really nicely lengthen the spine. One more breath. All right, we'll come back to center. Get yourself situated on the other side. Have your hand weight close by if you're wanting to work that rotator cuff. So we can be uplifted here with that work. Down on the elbow or all the way down, relaxing the arm. You can even tuck a little pillow under your head there. So with the leg, stack your hips first. Bottom knee is bent. We lift the leg straight up. Lower it down. Come forward a comfortable amount without letting your pelvis move. Lift it up and down. Pull it back and up. Bring it forward and up. We can use that hand weight for rotator cuff. Each time the arm lifts, we rotate up. We have two more. Nice, everybody. One more. And pull it back and stack your knees. With your clamshell, you can use the weight here or keep it in your arm for more rotator work. The knee opens, but the feet stay connected. Now really make sure that when you do this, you're not rolling backwards. So imagine there's a wall right behind your pelvis. You can even do this up against a wall. You would snuggle your back right up against the surface of the wall, and then that would make sure that you can't rotate back at all. Really squeeze that medial glute. We have six more for 10. Pull your abs in, five. Slow and controlled, four. Three, two, and one. All right, let's stretch that hip. So press yourself up. Bring the top leg to the front. Hug it in with your hand and twist and look behind you. So for some reason, this isn't com comfortable for you to do it. You can straighten out this bottom leg, and that might be a little bit more accessible for you to be able to do this stretch. And one more breath. And then we are rolling onto our back for an upside down bird dog. So as you know, bird dog is done from the hands and knees or we've done it standing. Now we're going to lay on our back for bird dog, but it looks just like it does when we're on the floor. So your knees are bent 90 and your hands are directly up. Optional weight in your right hand. So as we bring our right arm over our head any amount, the left arm or left leg goes long. And then we come back in. We're going to stay on that side. 
So just as when we're in bird dog on our hands and knees, our goal is to keep our spine neutral. And sometimes this is really difficult when we're laying on our back. So if you just want to do the leg and not the arm, you can. Vice versa is okay too, just do the arm and not the leg. Or you can set your right foot down on the floor instead of keeping it in table. And this way is much easier on our core here. So either way, let's get five more. Four. Three. Two. And one. All right, set your weight down next to you. Set your right foot on the mat and the left leg was the one that was moving out and in. You're going to stretch that hamstring. If you have a yoga strap, you want to use it under your foot, you can, or we'll just be lengthening it here for about five, six breaths. Bottom leg can extend out long. So either on our hands and knees or on our back, bird dog is great for the core, wonderful for core stabilization. Let's take one more breath in our stretch. And then we'll switch sides. So your optional weight is in your left hand. Your arms are up, your knees are stacked over your hips. As the left arm goes above the head, the right leg goes long. So oftentimes you'll know right away if this is going to work for you. And if you're really struggling keeping your spine neutral, the first thing to do is put your left foot down on the ground. And that's really going to assist. Then you can also decide not to use the weight or just to do the leg or just to do the arm. Now, if you're having trouble with your core as well, it helps if you exhale right when you're here in this long position. That's going to help to pull your abs in to brace your lower back. If you want a challenge, do the opposite and inhale when everything goes long and that's harder to keep your spine neutral. So let's get four more wherever you're at today. And three. Two. And one. The weight comes down, the feet come down, the leg that was moving, the right leg, will stretch up into our hamstring stretch. Optional, lower leg extended long to help release your hip flexor. And just stay here and breathe. Wow, class went by quickly for us today. We're almost coming up to the top of the hour, so we won't be able to go through our Tai Chi form again today, but I'm, make sure, I'm making sure that we, we review it every week so it becomes a little bit more in our muscle memory. We feel more and more comfortable with that Tai Chi form. Let's take one more breath here. And then one more stretch, our butterfly stretch. And you can either stay on your back if you want and just bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees open if you'd like to stay reclined. Or if you want to come up to a seated position, just roll yourself over, press yourself up, bring the soles of the feet together into our seated butterfly and let those knees open and slightly stretch forward. And just relax here, four or five breaths. A 
as you breathe, maybe reflecting back on class today for things that that were good aha moments for you, good learning moments about your body, about maybe your successes or things that you need a little bit more work on. Just cement that in your mind in this moment. And then we'll close our practice together. You can remain on your back if you'd like, or you can come into a more of a comfortable seated position with a nice long spine. As we reflect on our hard work today, the dedication that we have to our longevity and to the health of our spirit, mind, and body. And the light and the joy that reside within me honor the light and joy in each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much, everyone. If you can join me for a minute or two, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, I will see you on Thursday for yoga and on Friday for cardio.